What's going on, everybody? Zach Rosenblatt here with Mike K for the latest episode of the No Huddle Show, a podcast where we break down everything on the Disney Plus streaming service. Um, Mandalorian. That was a really, really good opening. Oh, you don't even have it yet, do you? You don't even have Disney Plus. I do not. I do not. Oh, I don't man. It's represent the mouse thing. yet. Um, maybe they'll sponsor us. <laughs> yeah, hey, that'd be great. You know, six dollars. That way you don't have to pay for your subscription. Maybe. Hey, that'd be cool. <laughs> Mandalorian's great. All right. Uh, anyway, it's almost like the Mandalorian's gone through the Eagles roster and just injured a I'll bunch. Say of the dude. Mandalorian is way more interesting than anything that's going on with the Eagles. Right the now. body count is probably less at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, the, and that's actually it's like pretty close. Yeah, because <laughs> there is a body count. Right. So speaking of that, so. We got a lot of, not a lot, we got some flack on our last post-game episode after the Bears game for people who thought we were being a little too negative, but um, somehow the Eagles have gotten into worse shape since that game. They've gotten, they got more injured over the bye week, actually, which is the most Eagles thing that could possibly ever happen. Darren Sproles is out for the season, his career, I mean, we say this every year, his career is probably over. You know Doug will sign him and then he'll get 10 carries in week two next year. That's just the par for the court. Hey, he, but he got in the top five. At least he got in the top five. So he's out. Alshon Jeffrey hasn't practiced all week. He won't be playing. Um, Nigel Bradham won't be playing. Nigel Bradham there. will not be playing. They keep they keep acting like he's close, and it doesn't actually seem like he's close. But um, Jordan, the, the yeah. big one, oh, Jason Peters, uh, yeah, he was limited all week. So it's a possibility he plays. They sound more optimistic, but they don't really tell us much about injuries, if you guys didn't know. <laughs> and then uh, the big one, and the most important one, is one that I kind of passed off as I didn't think it was serious until today, was Jordan Howard, um, I guess, suffered a shoulder injury. Doug called it a stinger against the late in the Bears game. And he's been limited all week. And as of us recording this, he hadn't even been cleared for contact this week. So that doesn't sound like somebody's going to play on Sunday. Uh, this whole time, like just knowing all week that Alshon probably wouldn't play, you kind of were hanging your hat on Jordan Howard and them deploying the running game. I guess I should add, uh, by the time this podcast comes out, the Eagles probably or maybe will have officially signed back Jay Ajayi, which I don't think this was a thing we were going to be talking about on the podcast this year. Speaking um, of guys that aren't going to be ready to play in a game this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Touche. I mean, I, 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 it would have been more fun for us, at least, if they went for LeGarrette Blunt instead of him. But uh, – and they have D'Angelo Henderson on the practice squad, which Doug, who Doug kind of hyped up today. So there hasn't been any official signing. Ian Rapport reported they're negotiating with – I forget what the exact – or they're in deep in talks. Deep in talks. Jay, like, what's he asking for? That like, No team has wanted him all offseason. He, he, if he's recovered, he like just recovered from his ACL tear last year. I'm but, curious how many ways you can. Sorry to cut you off. No, you're I, I'm fine. curious how many ways you can possibly say this is a minimum league deal. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, like well, incentive. So if he makes the Pro Bowl after uh, eight games, right? <laughs> like the fact that they're going to be potentially relying on Jay Jai and Jordan Matthews this week just kind of just underscores how this season has gone, and you know all the criticism. I, the the running back position they did a better job of preparing for. Like Corey Clement after the season, you couldn't really plan for that. Darren Sproles, you could plan for that. Like, they had four good running backs, and two of them are out for the year. Uh, three of them aren't going to play on Sunday, most likely. But the receiver position, like we've talked about, we don't need to, like, dwell on that over and over again. But the fact that Jordan Matthews was signed less than a week ago and is maybe <laughs> their most reliable option at wide receiver, like, legitimately, you could say he's the most reliable. Like, right, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, Matt Collins doesn't have a catch since Nom. <laughs> Nom, yes. Uh, J.J. Arcega, White's a bear, a bug just fell. Ugh, you guys know I love bugs. Mike's going to kill it live on the air. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, there's wow. another one. Oh, God. All right, we're going we're gonna to be overtaken by bugs by the end. That's not a great sign. Um, but, but, uh, but, yeah, so you have J.J. Arcega, Whiteside, who it seems like he's going to play more this week. They claim that he's been working in all the positions, but their excuse for not playing him has been that he's Alshon's backup. So if they don't on Sunday, then they've – I don't know if they've given up on him. But anyway, and then you have Nelson Aguilar, who we've talked a lot about how bad he's been this year. So – and that's all? Yeah. Um, so I got a lot. To so say. what are your thoughts? I got a lot. Um, where do you want me to start? Where should I start uh, on this? Because I got a lot to say about this entire bungling of this of this roster. The, the receiver, uh, receiver you're talking about? Okay. Just no, in general. Uh, um, you, you go into the bye week knowing that you have Alshon right. Jeffrey injured and you have Jordan Howard injured. Yeah, because the injury happened <laughs> in that Bears game. So, But you claimed a safety. Cool. Good for you. Um, no more Sendejo, though. Correct. Uh, I think the biggest issue here is this has been a trend with this team. It's 
there's urgency in some areas and there isn't urgency in others. There's, you know, so they're bringing in Ajayi after Darren Sproles is done for the year and Jordan Howard has a stinger, but he's practiced all week and Ajayi's been out there. If you really were that concerned, why not bring in Ajayi during the bye week so you at least have some insurance there? You have Nate Herbig, who we all love as a person. He's a wonderful guy. Um, he ate a spicy chip for the sake of the team the other night. You know what? Sometimes you got to make sacrifices. He should be taking a it's, chip it's, off, it's the, off the 53-man yeah. roster. If it's you, called the one-chip challenge. You should look at There's some funny stuff. But he, but, had, he had a half a chip. It was freaking out. But, anyway. like, you could have brought in J.H.I. prior to this week. Now he's potentially going to sign, have no practice this week. Oh, and by the way, he hasn't practiced in well over a year. Uh, he hasn't played in well over a year. Imagine going from not practicing for like 13 months to playing on Sunday against the best defense in the league. It's either a Disney movie or a really scary Blumhouse production where everyone dies. Yeah. And I bet he's going to be on the active roster if and when they sign him, by the way. And here's the thing. If you are going to sign him, you are compelled to bring up D'Angelo Henderson, like you mentioned, because let's say Something. your your main punt returner now, Boston Scott, let's say he gets injured on a punt return... <laughs> Or yeah, that's a good point. Miles Sanders, who's, who's your main kick returner, let's say they take him off those duties. What are you going to do in, in that instance? Henderson can return punts and kicks. Um, I just think, you know, it, you can compare the JHIE situation to the Jordan Matthews situation in that they're guys that were here last season. They're guys that have experience in the system, know the offense. That's terrific, but Jordan Matthews couldn't make the 49ers. Um, he played one game for them. Then you have Jay Ajayi, who was passed over for Alfred Morris two weeks ago by the Arizona Cardinals. Alfred Morris lasted like four days with the Cardinals. I just think like I'm all for familiarity, but at some point it's getting not lazy, but predictable and not very smart to bring in these guys who... Nobody else in the league wants. Listen, Eagles fans value their players more than anyone else in the league. And that goes for any team. You always value your, you, your player more than, than they would be somewhere else. But like at this point, Ajayi hasn't played in over a year. Um, he's had significant injury issues. Knee issues since right. college. Um, you've got Jordan Howard, who's a comparable back, who's got well, a that's, stinger. That's why you're bringing Ajayi. Right. Yeah. But like... You and I talked about it off off air. You know, Miles Sanders is going to get a boatload of carries. This is going to be like a true number one running back offense. And Boston Scott's going to sprinkle in there. But, like, I just don't under – J.J. doesn't give you special teams help. So you're probably, you know, sacrificing that by bringing in D'Angelo Henderson. Then you have four running backs. Oh, he's going to help in pass protection in his first game. Right. <laughs> I mean, I just think it's like – Or receiving. I don't think there's a lot of – he wasn't in a training camp. You know, he's not no. – you, you don't know how great his football this shape is. This is only his preseason. This is his training camp. So. Right. And we saw how that was for guys like Fletcher Cox. Camus. And, and Camus. And, and, and guys who had to adjust on the fly. You don't really have that benefit going up against the Patriots in a game – you have to win one of the two the next two games. If if Jordan Howard Stinger, lingers. you know li Stinger lingers, Stinger linger, um, linger Stinger, you're in trouble. And I don't mean to sound very doom and gloom here, but it does kind of seem like a team that's so forward thinking with roster building has just kind of changed their approach rapidly this year. And I'm not going to give Joe Douglas credit because he's done a terrible job with the Jets so yeah. far from a public relations perspective. And a roster perspective, and you can say, oh, well, he got hired late, whatever. No, sorry. I, I wouldn't say he's the difference maker here. You look at the wide receiver position, they've had three wide receivers on the practice squad for a month and a half, and only really kept four healthy guys at wide receiver throughout the season. Because, you know, they've had five, but Deshaun's been inactive, and what have you, and they haven't promoted any of those guys. Greg Ward, who's been here forever, knows the offense. Rob Davis, who's played in a similar system in Washington, super athletic. And then Marcus Green, who went who went to the same college as Doug Peterson, yeah. has some really good he was speed. drafted this year by the Falcons. Yeah. Extremely productive. Like, do something. Like, you can talk about Matt Collins so you're blue in the face. He's a formation player. We've brought this up before. But when you're a formation player and you're literally there to just be part of the formation and block, you can't have holding penalties and you have to know where to line up in the formation. 
He's not done either of those well. I found Carson Walsh's uh, <laughs> Wait, we even had a chance comments. to talk about that. Yeah, because it happened after we recorded on Monday. Yeah, he said that he grades out positively all Matt the time. Matt Collins does. Matt Collins. I, he said, so he said he aligns right, he assigns right, and uh, he works hard, basically, was the message. And, and he said because of that, he's one of their highest graders. Maybe um, if they're counting practice and he's working for the weekend, but, like, I don't see it. Um, I don't see it on film. I don't see it in games. I, I just – I don't see it. And so you brought up J, uh, J.J. Arcega-Whiteside. A few things on that. One, if he is the main – X backup, he should be playing a lot. I'd imagine Jordan Matthews and Alshon Jeffrey rotate between the slot and the Z receiver position. Uh, Jordan Matthews said when he arrived that he learned a lot from his time in San Francisco. Um, obviously, he learned a lot in New England last offseason. He can play all three uh, positions. J.J. or Sigal Whiteside is an interesting uh, little wrinkle to this offense this week, and I'm not trying to like oversell him. But for a team that prepares as well as the Patriots do, you only really have two regular season games of film on him. Then you've got four games where he was playing against guys that now work at Amazon or Verizon Wireless. So I think, like, he he's a little bit of an enigma. You know, we haven't really seen Jordan Matthews all that much either. So maybe that helps you a little bit. I'm just trying to stay a little bit positive with how we're throwing out all this stuff. But... If I were them, I would bring up a wide receiver and a running back, regardless of whether you sign JHI, because if you look at it, they're only going to have, on pay, let's say Jordan Matthews and Alshon Jeffrey can't play, three running backs, four wide receivers, and two tight ends. So that means that you have nine available playmakers. That's going to put you in a really rough position if you have one or two injuries at those spots, and given the previous history of the season, <laughs> you're probably going to have one or two. Yeah, we saw how crippled we saw how crippled they were in Atlanta when yeah, Deshaun Jackson, Dallas scenario. Goddard, and, and Alshon. And, and we say it's the worst case scenario, but it's happened, right? Yeah. So I think they're doing a disservice to the offense. If I were Doug Peterson and I was chatting with Howie Roseman, I would say I was frustrated because they have had to MacGyver this depth chart for for playmakers it, it's just they don't have a lot to work with and i know a lot of people say you know we don't criticize carson enough or or we don't we criticize the weapons too much but the reality of the situation is is this a roster which is favored defense surprisingly they've set jim schwartz up as much as they possibly could even with the cornerbacks falling off and the defensive tackles falling off and um i mean they've had seven defensive ends for the majority of the year you know it's like the offense really hasn't got been supplemented at all, and I think that's going to be a problem down the stretch because with the injuries that they have, Jordan Matthews, in my opinion, has been the MVP of their season. Jordan Howard? Or, sorry, Jordan Howard has been the... Too many Jordans. I was like, wait, you're, you're already... Crowded yeah. Jordan Matthews. Well, maybe. I don't know. You remember Jim Schwartz said Craven LeBlanc was like the MVP of their defense. Yeah, he said they enough. wouldn't have made yeah. the playoffs without him. But whatever, Jordan yeah. Howard has been the MVP of this season so far. He hasn't been the best player. That's Brandon Brooks. But like, yeah. he has been the reason why they've been able to sustain some pretty impressive wins on the road. Um, and this is Miles Sanders' show. And what hurts them is you and I have talked about 22 and 23 personnel a lot. If Jordan Matthews isn't in there, Boston Scott's not frightening you at all. And maybe that's something that you look into where maybe Boston Scott's kind of an enigma and you can use him in different ways. Uh, he's caught the ball pretty well. We've we reached the stage where, like, maybe, maybe Boston Scott. I mean, you, you, you have, you have, okay, so, so you have guy. you're trotting out Matt Collins, J.J. Arcega Whiteside, and, and Miles Sanders. Like, this is, you know, this is the reality of the situation. And maybe Nelson Aguilar plays up to his competition. He was great against the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Maybe this is his time to shine. He knows that he's got the stage to really show something in this one. The expectations are pretty low for him. So, you know, he, he can go out and, and perform. And I'm done. <laughs> and rant. Um, yeah, you know... There was like a lot of talk. So the line when it opened was only Patriots by three and a half. And there's a lot of talk like around town about, you know, don't count the Eagles out of this game, blah, blah, blah. But I, I just don't like this is going to have to come down to the Eagles winning a low scoring game. It's going to have to come down to the defense shutting down Tom Brady, which they didn't do in the Super Bowl, by the way. Um, Historically, Jim Schwartz has struggled against. Yeah. Um, Bill he actually worked for Bill Belichick like early in his career. Yeah. But, uh, um, 
So no, so you're relying on shutting down Tom Brady, who even though he doesn't have Rob Gronkowski anymore, and maybe the weapons aren't like as cra- like crazy talented as they used to be, they still have Julian Edelman, who will work the slot really well, obviously. And they have Muhammad, Muhammad Sanu, uh, who's given the Eagles some trouble in the past. And they have James White coming out of the backfield, and Sonny Michelle is a decent run. Like he's, he hasn't had a great year. But the point being, like, you're relying on a defense that has only really done well against one – good quarterback this year, which is Aaron Rodgers. And he had a lot of yards that game, actually. Uh, And the other three wins, so they beat the Redskins in case Keenum had 380 yards. They barely beat them. Uh, They beat beat Luke Falk-led Jets. They beat the Josh Allen-led Bills. And they beat the Mitchell Trubisky-led Bears. Their defense has looked a lot better the last couple weeks, but when you're going against a quarterback, you can't throw the ball down the field. Like, it just, as you can see with the Eagles offense, it's just much easier to stop them. So, I'm not as like I, the, while the defense has been better, Jalen Mills has been huge. Uh, the linebacker position, I think, is an issue. Nigel Bradham again isn't going to play this week. I, I just I think this could be a blowout. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think any game could be, a blowout. but okay, yeah, I, 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 no, this, I get what you're saying. I like, think this, I, I lean towards will. I should say will be a blowout. Yeah, I mean, this is a rough one uh, on paper. But then again, sometimes when you when you you're bare bones and you have a good game plan, and I think they've known for a while that they're going to be bare bones. Maybe that helps you. Uh, they've also had two weeks. Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to paint a rosy picture here. Uh, you know, again, imagine going from not practicing or playing for 13 months, and then you're told you're going to suit up on Sunday against the best defensive play caller in the entire league. It's just, I, I don't really understand why there's such a lack of urgency. I don't know if they're punting this game, which would be dreadful. I mean, if, if you're a fan and you're and you're going to this game, you're probably not expecting a win. But, I mean, they still have six more games after this, where if they play well in those six games, they're making the playoffs. And I just think once you get to the dance, you know, you got a shot, but... I don't know. It's just bizarre. It just seems like there's a lack of urgency to fill major holes. And I'm, and I know we're not behind the scenes and we're not the money men and we're not handling the draft picks and we don't know what the long-term plan is, but just on the surface, it's just, it looks like they bungled this to the point where I've got my conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory hats on hat on. And you're always quick to tell me that I'm always wrong. <laughs> uh, Jordan Matthews being limited. And then you bring in Jay Ajayi on a Friday has me thinking maybe this is a Bill Belichick red herring where, you know, Bill Belichick's all about gamesmanship and he can be very sneaky. And, and, you know, we always get on the Eagles about their injury stuff, but Bill Belichick's the king of that stuff. And, you know, I would they, I would just say that the Eagles have shown no evidence of being smart with health. Right, right. Statuses. I'm giving them I'm yeah. giving them the benefit of yes, the doubt here, like, extre- like to the extreme. But yeah, I I mean in theory that like if you're gonna do that against the team, it'd be the Patriots. Yeah, I mean Jordan Matthew. I mean Jordan, like I still I still Howard. I still have the theory that well Bill Belichick famously does to the point where like there's a blowout and he'll start running in certain situations. So like the analytics are all messed up for when a team like looks back at what they do. Like that's how deep cut he is. And I've said on this podcast that I think he traded a second round pick for Sanu to ruin the wide receiver market. Like, I, I agree with you. Like they're insanely forward thinking to the point where no other team can actually say they're forward thinking by comparison. Yeah. But um, I don't know. It's just going to be, it's going to be a very hard game. for. Them. I, I would say that, you know, there's no moral victories, as people say. But I think if they can keep it competitive and if they only lose by a little bit, I think you can come out feeling pretty good going against the Seahawks team that they're going to have a lot of trouble with, too, by the way. Like, that team mm-hmm. is really good. Russell Wilson, um, I know they barely beat the – who was that they played the other day, that crazy game? Uh, San Francisco. San Francisco, yeah. Who's a very good team, by the way. But uh, that, that was a close one. But Russell Wilson is just – like, they haven't played a quarterback like him really this year. Yeah, they haven't played. I mean, there's not really anyone like him. And uh, their defense looks pretty good. So these next two games are going to be tough. And like you said, they probably need to win one of these games. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, maybe they're planning for everybody to be back for the Seahawks game. Yeah, in theory. I mean, mean, they don't have to win both games, but I do think there will be a very large sense of panic if they do not. Um, From a matchup standpoint, we won't get too far into it, but... um, the Patriots' passing defense is very scary because they've only allowed three passing touchdowns and they've uh, picked up 19 interceptions. 
three to nineteen is a big touchdown to turnover interception ratio. Um, this is a game where Carson's going to have to take what the defense gives him. He's going to have to improvise a little bit. They're going to have to give him some plays that are a little bit longer to set up or guys are going downfield so he can improvise and make kind of those. You know, we've talked about them not making him be Superman, and that's not an insult. That's a fact that they are working it through the system. Carson's done a good job of being a system quarterback as of right now. They need to kind of shake that for this game. He needs to do some Russell Wilson-esque maneuvering and, and some backyard football stuff. Because um, they have to show the, the Patriots something that they haven't seen yet because the Patriots practice so well. On defense, the Eagles are playing much more man coverage the last two weeks. Um, I think that's to their benefit. It seems to be like there's a lot of confusion in zone coverage. Um, I like Jannard Avery in this game. I do think the Patriots offense is pretty, you know, standard with league average. They're not going to put up a ton of points. I think if the Eagles can get over 23 points, they've got a very good shot in this game. I, it's easier said than done. Um, I do like Jalen Mills and Ronald Darby against these wide receivers. Uh, I like the safeties against these tight ends and, and running backs. Do you think they put uh, Gilmore on uh, Zach Ertz? Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a Dallas Goddard yeah, game. We're going to see how good he's developed. Because he's going to go up against Patrick oh, well. Chung, in theory, or Kyle Vinoy. And um, he should win both those matchups relatively easy. Size from a um, Patrick Chung matchup standpoint, Kyle Vinoy is very athletic, but he's not as athletic as Dallas Goddard. Um, I think... I think the Eagles will be able to run on this team, um, but Miles Sanders offers a much. It, Miles Sanders has to run confidently. He cannot bounce and and really do that whole shifty thing. shifty thing. It's just not going to work here. Yeah, I was going to say we we haven't really talked about Miles that much here. I think we should say that you know he's obviously looked a lot better the last couple of weeks sure. since uh, since he looked really bad for the first seven or eight weeks. Sure, or seven weeks. Although I will say most of his yard has just come on one play. Um, but he's also – I think he's proven this season that he's best suited as a change of pace as opposed to the bell cow. So I, I'm a little concerned about him being the number one guy this week. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think uh, – I do think we're going to see a decent amount of Boston Scott if Jordan Howard's on this game just because Boston runs kind of violently. He he can – he know, he's very – He's not very fast, honestly, for a small guy, but he can hit a hit the hole and, and pick up yardage. Um, it's just a very weird dynamic because you go into this week thinking that you have Darren Sproles and that Jordan Howard, in theory, is going to be cleared, and now you don't know. Um, I'd wager to say that, that Alshon Jeffrey is not playing. I know the official injury report will come out soon. I'm assuming he's going to be listed as doubtful. Um, Linebacker-wise, these... These linebackers need the Eagles linebackers need to tackle well. Nathan Gary's been a nightmare when it's come to run stopping. He's been great in pass coverage, but they don't really have any tight end. I mean, he'll probably spy on James White, I would assume. I we saw some reports from Mike Reese from ESPN that the Patriots had uh, guys dress up as Nathan Gary, and I think the reason for that is Gary would probably be the spy on James White. He's the most elusive guy out of their backfield. He's a guy that can make game changing plays. He's basically a receiver at running back. Right. Um, you know, think Deion Lewis, think, you know, Darren Sproles in his prime. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is going to be a tough task. Like, it's very hard to feel confident in the Eagles, even though they're coming into this game on a two game winning streak and coming off the bye. You know, the Eagles blessed, got blessed with three straight road games, and then, um, you know, they have a. You know, on paper, it seemed like a tough one against the Bears. Not so much. But then they go on by and have to face two teams back-to-back coming off their own by. So the schedule makers really didn't do the Eagles any favors. I think that's probably why the last four games of the season are pretty winnable. Like, they really position them to have, like, an easy run. If they can make it through the gauntlet, they can, you know, see what they're made of. Well, they can kind of dominate towards the end. But... You want to feel good about both these games. I don't get the feeling we're going to feel very good about this team coming out of Sunday. All right. So prediction wise, so we usually have to submit our uh, predictions for our uh, story we do every week, where everyone our staff predicts. And for that one, I still had it not being very close. I had it Patriots thirty four, Eagles twenty one. 
I think it's going to be a little more lopsided than that now. I'm just convinced just based on the personnel and offense. So I'll, I'll switch to Patriots, 27, Eagles, uh, 10. I'm going to say 10 points. So you think the defense steps up and stops them from scoring points? Or you well, I mean, they're still scoring 27. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. And um, are you sticking with your score? I had a Patriots 24, Eagles 17. I'll say Patriots 24, Eagles 13. Yeah. So my, so four points is the Howard difference? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, we can read some comments, and we got a few nice reviews from you guys again. Um, I don't think I can read this guy's username on the air. <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably not. <laughs> But whale. I'll, but I'll whale. say uh, yeah, something whale. Uh, <laughs> One thousand. He says won't beat Patriots, won't beat Seahawks, won't beat Cowboys. I mean, there's a possibility, honestly. This guy is just like a bundle of sunshine. Connor Spencer says I have a strong dislike for these guys and their voices. So do our parents <laughs> and everybody who knows us, really. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Gornick, because <laughs> we talked about how they should resign Jordan Howard. He said I would resign Howard for three years, eight million per year. Carson Wentz, I think, has been great. He just doesn't have any wide receivers that are consistent. Nelly and Jeffrey got to go this upcoming offseason. Well, Nelly for sure will be gone. Jeffrey's a little tougher. Um, the rest of that, $8 million is probably more than how he would pay per year for Jordan Howard. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Carson Wentz, I mean. I mean he just gave him the minimum. Which was probably like fair about Wentz. Uh, C. Trus. Seahawks just beat the 49ers. Seattle going to be a tough game. We need to beat New England. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Oh, we got a little Star Wars comment here. Okay, Drew Christensen says, Hey, guys, a matchup this big seems likely to come down to the turnover battle in time of possession. What do you think is more likely this week against the Patriots? The Eagles win the turnover battle or win the time of possession? Time of possession. Um, do you think if they win either, they get the win? No. Even the turnover battle? I mean, yeah. If they win both? If they get... If they get both, then yes. Yeah. If they, that's yeah. an interesting way of saying that. Oh, and he also said, P.S., The Empire Strikes Back is a top ten movie of all time. Excited to see Mandalorian. Boba Fett is my favorite. And Check then he said, Fett's, Fett's Vet. Vet by M.C. Chris, if you've never heard of it. Empire Strikes Back is a classic film. And Mandalorian is great. Thanks, Drew. <laughs> Holy Tomatoes. Holy cows, guys. I don't like your bye week. You guys go M.I.A. <laughs> That was my fault. I think the biggest key to an Eagles win will be Fletcher Cox putting pressure up the middle. He's getting better every week. Keep it going. They're going to do everything they can to try and neutralize him. But, yeah, if he's dominant, then that's that's very good for them. Um, Marcel Powell, seeing all the top offenses, our running teams, what's the problem with running? It's not cute or flashy, but it wins games. It's getting colder. Those deep shots are not going to be there. All right, basically, There's uh, absolutely nothing wrong with yeah, that, Marcel. Nothing. You're on point. Yeah. No. Uh, let's see. Get a lot of this from people. To, Jace move, a lot of numbers. Tell, tells the Eagles to draft Henry Ruggs, which is the Alabama receiver. I, I see stuff about him on Twitter all the time. I haven't, I haven't watched him. But, uh, all right, and then I'll go to a podcast review. Because we're narcissists. <laughs> ah, sorry, my phone. Maybe I wasn't ready. <laughs> uh, keep sending all these comments. We love them, positive or negative. Uh, you know, whatever you got. <laughs> I mean, be as nice as you can, but also you can be mean. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, Zach's mother reads these. Just <laughs> keep in mind. All right, here we go. Oh, even one from yesterday. Oh, wow. From bread 83 titled Love the Show. Jordan Matthews, definitely an upgrade. Solid hands coming out of the slot. I just don't trust Nelson outside. He can't catch the deep ball. He reminds me of Featherstone from the movie Unnecessary Roughness. <laughs> I, <laughs> I pray the Eagles don't bring him back. Keep up the good work, guy. Keep up the good work guys. Love the show. Coach 48. Title defense, uh, five star review. He says, "Will you quit mentioning Foles about last year?" I don't think we, I don't think we've done that. Um, the defense made them oh, stop with this. He said he's saying that we had Foles conspiracy theories. Basically, uh, I don't think that's true. But uh, thank you for the five star review. Uh, fly hey, Eagles. What? You can <laughs> criticize us all you want. Just give us the five. The <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you can say the meanest thing you want in these. Uh, Vinny 29 Fly Eagles Fly. He says, great podcast. Thanks for keeping us up to date on all things Eagles. They need to draft the true number one receiver for Carson. Think of watching this team with a stud wide receiver like other QBs in this league have. I mean, that's Thomas, Adams, Hopkins, Evans, Hilton, Jones, Green, Cooper. Wentz deserves it. I actually have thought about, like, how much different things would be if they did pull off a trade for Amari Cooper last year. So I think there were rumors that they offered a second round pick. Mm-hmm. Like I think they probably they might even won a Super Bowl last year with Amari, honestly. Um all right, we'll end on that note. As always, keep these coming. We love reading them. We love seeing them. 
Uh, and we'll end on that note. Uh, leave us some comments with some predictions for Sunday, and we'll get another podcast into your feeds Sunday night. Bye.